Hello there, welcome to the news on Rupavahini. Very good evening, I'm Rohan Mendes. And I'm Daphne Charles. Let's begin with a look at tonight's headlines. The President emphasized the responsibility of media secretaries in enlightening people about the government's development process. Sri Lanka and Korea have signed an MOU covering several sectors. The government has given total freedom beyond protocols for the UN Human Rights Commissioner to look into the situation in Sri Lanka. New Zealand is to assist Sri Lanka to achieve self-sufficiency in liquid milk. And British intelligence have said that there is likelihood of Syrian forces using chemical weapons. And for the news in detail now, President Mahindra Rajapaksa has requested the media secretaries of ministries to dedicate themselves to enlighten the people about the activities of the government while protecting the image of the government and their respective ministers. The president made these comments at a discussion held with the media secretaries at Temple Trees today. The president explained the importance of providing a clear understanding to the people about the development work being implemented by the government for the benefit of the future generation. The president instructed the media secretaries to enlighten the public about all development activities carried out on ministry levels. The president said that it is the responsibility of the media secretaries to give publicity to the activities being carried out by their ministers and project them in society. There are certain ministers who do not like much publicity. The president said without giving due publicity to the ministers and their work, the government cannot be run unilaterally. Therefore, it is the responsibility of the media secretaries to protect the importance of their ministers and highlight the activities being carried out by them. Certain websites, by publishing false propaganda, attempts to inconvenience the ministers and the government. The president instructed the media secretaries to work with an understanding about these activities. Minister of Mass Media and Information, Kehelia Rabukwala, Secretary to the Ministry, Dr. Charitha Herat, the Secretary to the State Media Secretaries Association, Harsha B. Abekun, also attended this function. Well, a memorandum of understanding has been signed between Sri Lanka and Korea for the development of several sectors. The MOU covers the sectors of providing pure drinking water, wastewater management and environmental protection. Accordingly, technical knowledge and financial assistance for water management projects will be provided by the Korean government. The Korea-Sri Lanka Environmental Cooperation Forum was held in Colombo today under the patronage of Korean Prime Minister Yoon Hong Wong. Sustainable development was the main topic of this forum. Addressing the forum, Minister Dinesh Gunavardhana said that the government has taken several steps for sustainable development. The minister appreciated the assistance being given by Korea for several projects in Sri Lanka. The Korean Prime Minister, speaking at the function, said that Korea is happy about the rapid development that has been achieved by Sri Lanka. The agreement was signed by the Deputy Minister for Environment of Korea, Buke Su Siok, and the Deputy Minister for Water Resources, Mrs. Nirupama Rajapaksa. The Korean Prime Minister and his delegation made an inspection tour of the Kalamba Harbour today. Project Minister Rohit Abe Gunavardana and the Chairman of the Sri Lanka Ports Authority, Dr. Priyat Bandavikrama, also attended the occasion. Well, Minister Kehelia Rabukwela says that the government adopted a policy beyond the protocols in the official visit to Sri Lanka of the UN High Commissioner on Human Rights. He said that she has been given the full freedom even to investigate about Sri Lanka outside the official framework. The Minister made these comments at the Cabinet Decision Announcement Media Conference held in Colombo today. Minister of Mass Media and Information Kehelia Rambukwela said that if we acted with all protocols, we could be accused, as it was done earlier, that we made a guided tour of her visit. It will add to the allegations made earlier. The minister said that the government took the stand of making completely open our dealings with the international community and to be even beyond the protocols. This decision has been taken as otherwise we will be subjected to serious allegations and the country will have to face serious problems.
జాతి అంతర్యాత్తక మేకరణ గనుదినేది ఉపరిమే వివృతవేన్ సమహర క్విట రాజతాంత్రిక క్రియాపరిపాటి బాహిరవ వత్ ఇక్కడ ప్రశ్న మొక్కద ఈట వడ ధర్ము ప్రశ్న ఈట వడ ధర్ము చోదన వదిలితే రటాఖ్యటిట అపి లాక్కినది The minister also provided answers to the opinions being expressed by the opposition. Minister of Mass Media and Information Kohli Rambukwala said that the government does not want to stage manage a scene by bringing Mrs. Pillay to this country. Therefore, it has allowed her to go beyond the protocols and make her own investigations and provide a justifiable report. He said the government wants her to present a clear report without raising on incorrect opinions. The minister said that Mrs. Pillay has the total freedom to express her opinion but she has no authority to tell the government how the country should be governed how the ministers should be appointed and who should be the ministers the commonwealth foundation said that all arrangements have been made for holding the commonwealth people's conference as a precursor to the commonwealth heads of state summit it will be held from november 10th to 14th at hikadwa with the participation of civil societies and the commonwealth foreign ministers the people's conference is a platform in which views of peoples and people and rulers will be exchanged the concept of holding people's conferences was introduced in the year 1965 This conference is held every 2 years as a precursor to the Commonwealth Heads of State Summit. The conference will discuss about development activities in relevant seminars represented by people and people's representatives. It will discuss subjects such as food security, climatic disasters, strengthening women's economy, ethnic reconciliation, innovative publication and generation of employment for the youth. That this is a great thing for Sri Lanka. that Sri Lanka is hosting that this conversation that is happening uh, globally and Sri Lanka is taking this opportunity to ensure that the voices of commonwealth civil society is actually given the importance and the space that it deserves so it's we it's a privilege for the foundation to be working with the government of Sri Lanka at the end of the uh, sessions the uh, document will be presented to the uh, foreign ministers of the commonwealth who will take it up with the uh, leaders uh, heads of governments and we hope most of our suggestions will be taken up mm -hmm. for the next uh, uh, two years where sri lanka will be leading the commonwealth our president will be the uh, head of uh, commonwealth for those two uh, years so we hope especially from the countries in the region something uh, which is relevant to us will be taken forward mm -hmm. minister of external affairs professor g l peris met the visiting un high commissioner for human rights navaneethan pillay at his ministry today Minister Peres welcoming the UN High Commissioner provided an update on matters relating to post conflict development. The minister highlighted the action taken by law enforcement authorities in respect of accountability and cited the instances of some members of the special task force having been indicted. In respect of allegations of disappearances, Professor Peres explained that the Ministry of Justice has formulated draft amendments to the Penal Code, Criminal Procedure Code and Human Rights Commission of Sri Lanka Act. In respect of reconciliation, Professor Peres said that the magnitude of the challenges Sri Lanka faces and the brief period of time since the end of the conflict must be given due consideration. With the parliamentarians of the Tamil National Alliance Suresh Premachandran and Aryanendran have told the people of north that nothing can be achieved without arms they have made this opinion addressing the first public rally of the Tamil National Alliance held at the Mana public grounds under the chairmanship of the chief minister ministerial candidate of that alliance CV Bigneshwaran These parliamentarians of the Tamil National Alliance have told at this public meeting that if they have arms not only a federal state even something beyond that can be achieved and it is regrettable that there is no struggle in the north after Prabakaran 
The Tamil National Alliance parliamentarian Arya Nendran said that Selva carried forward the struggle for final solution for the Tamil people. Later it became an armed struggle. It was carried forward by Prabhakaran. However, we do not have any of these struggles at present. The Tamil National Alliance parliamentarian Suresh Premachandran said if they have arms they can obtain not only a federal solution but they can discuss something beyond that and obtain it. He said that the Tamil people will not get anything without arms. The government of New Zealand has expressed their fullest support to help Sri Lanka become self-sufficient in liquid milk production. Foreign Minister Murray Makali, who is on a visit to Sri Lanka, has made this comment when he met Minister Basil Rajapaksa today. It is the objective of the government to make Sri Lanka self-sufficient in milk production by the year 2016. Programs for increasing local milk production, encouraging milk producing farmers and propagation of high quality milk cows are being carried out in this connection. The New Zealand government has expressed willingness to provide production and technical knowledge for Sri Lankan milk farmers to increase the milk production. Only 33% of the liquid milk requirement of the country is being provided locally at present. The remaining 67% is being imported. During the period 2005 to 2012, milk production in the country increased by 56%. Livestock specialists point out that 300,000 milk cows are required for Sri Lanka to become self-sufficient in milk production. Well, the future of Uthru Punarudaya is looking today at the rail services that will be open from Omantai to Kilinochi from the 14th of next month. The distance between Omantai and Kilinochi railway stations is 63 kilometers. The first test run of the rail service up to Kilinochi has been carried out. The Elkhorn Company of India has constructed this railway line, making it possible for trains to run at a speed of 120 kilometers per hour. The test run was carried out under the supervision of Elkhorn executive officers, engineers and the officials of the railway department of Sri Lanka. In many places, the speed of the train was over 110 kilometers. The railway stations of Pulyankulam, Mankulam and Murgandi are situated between Omantai and Kirinochi. 29 states and private institutions have come forward to build railway stations up to Kankasantare in the northern line. It took only 44 minutes to travel 63 kilometers for the train from Omantai to Kilinochi. A large crowd gathered at the Kilinochi railway station to see a train arriving there after a period of 23 years. It was for the first time in their life that many of the youth and children saw a train. The construction of the Northern Railway Line was started in the year 1900 and the rail service between Colombo and Kankasanture was started in the year 1905. In the year 1956, the Aldevi Express train was introduced. This service brought a huge income for the railway department until the railway services were stopped in the 90s. The Tiger terrorists blasted the railway lines at Murugandhi in Kokaville in the year 1985. After that, they stopped the railway services to the north in June 1990. After the defeat of the terrorists, the railway line was re-established up to Omantai in May 2011. This railway line has now been extended up to Kilinochi. This railway line will be extended up to Jaffna and Kankasantare next year. The new resident director of the World Bank for Sri Lanka and Maldives, Mrs. Francoise Claude, said that Sri Lanka has become a country of high achievements by fulfilling many millennium development goals. Mrs. Francois Claude visited, te visited temple trees yesterday and expressed this opinion when she met President Mahinda Rajapaksa. She also pointed out the importance of working dedicatedly to achieve the Millennium Development Goals. She said that the task entrusted to the World Bank is to find out how they could help the country better than earlier. The President told a World Bank official to visit rural areas to get a wide understanding about all sectors of the country. Talking directly to the people is the best way of understanding the true situation of the country on ground level. Mrs. Klotz told the President that it is a great honor being able to serve Sri Lanka. The Secretary to the Ministry of Finance, Dr. P. B. Jasundara, also attended the occasion. Well, more than 400 traditional United National Party stalwarts of the Polgohavala area joined the Sri Lanka Freedom Party. They obtained the membership of the TSLFP at a public rally held under the chairmanship of Minister Maitripala Sirisena. 
This group said that the diluting policy of the United National Party has not ended yet. They asked when the party leadership is unable to manage the party properly, how they can provide solutions for the problems facing the country. A group of United National Party stalwarts from the Kanbegadara area of the Dambadene electorate also joined the Sri Lanka Freedom Party. They joined the SLFP at a function held yesterday under the leadership of parliamentarian Shanta Bandara. The Kurunagala branch of the Public Health Services Association has decided to support the United People's Freedom in the Provincial Council election. The chairperson of the association, Mrs. Devika Koditwaku, says that their association will provide full support to ensure the victory of the alliance. She made this statement at a function held yesterday at the Red Cross Society Hall in Kurunagala. The Kurunagala District Branch of the All Island Samurdi Development and Agricultural Research Assistant Officers Association has also decided to support the United People's Freedom Alliance in the Provincial Council elections. The members of the association expressed this commitment at a rally held recently. FACET Sri Lanka 2013 International Gem Exhibition opened at the City Marvel Bandaranaika Memorial Hall in Colombo. The exhibition is being held for the 23rd time. Senior Minister Dr. Sara Tamanugama and American National Ruben Bindra were chief guests at the inaugural function. The exhibition will be held until the 1st of September. There are more than 150 exhibition stores. Gem merchants from India, Singapore and Myanmar are also participating in the exhibition. Well, the appeal court has ruled that the annual sacrifices of animals at the Badra Kali Kovil of Muneshwaram Chilau is against the law. The appeal court has given this ruling upon reviewing a petition submitted to the court by several Buddhist organizations, including the National Sangha Sammelanaya. The petition was taken up for hearing by a panel of judges consisting Sisiru Diabru, Deepali Vijay Sundara and Sunil Rajapaksa. The petitioners have told the courts that holding of the animal sacrifices are without obtaining an approval from the relevant Pradesh Sabha. The appeal court accepted the point raised and said that any ethnic community of the country has the freedom of worshipping their own religions but it should not be done violating the common laws of the country. The court ordered the custodians of the Kovil state that if they are going to hold animal sacrifices, they should obtain the relevant permits. The court also ruled that the police have the authority to prevent unauthorized animal sacrifices. Parliamentarian Dr. Mrs. Sudarshan Ifanandapulli questioned opposition leader Ranul Vikramasinghe when he would end the despicable politics of misleading people by making use of the dead. The parliamentarian has issued a press release vehemently condemning a speech made by the opposition leader at a rally held on the 27th of this month, making use of the name of the late Minister Jairaj Fernandopulle. The rally has been held to oppose the incidents that took place at Ratupasvala in Valeveria. Mrs. Sudarshan Ifanandapulle said that she is in possession of the voice tapes and newspaper reports about the statements made by the opposition leader. Earlier, the opposition leader had stated that the tiger terrorists were not connected to the murder of the late Minister Jairaj Fernandapulle. However, at the Valeveria meeting held on the 27th of this month, Mr. Vikramasinghe has said that it was tiger terrorists who murdered Mr. Fernando Pulle as their first victim from Valeveria. Mrs. Fernando Pulle has stated in her press release that the people of this country will not get misled by the despicable politics of Mr. Vikramasinghe. Well, the telegram service in the country will be closed by the end of October. Minister Ranjit Sembalapiti has said that this has become possible due to the victories achieved by the country in the information technology sector. The minister made these comments at a media conference held at the Ministry of Telecommunication and Information Technology today. The Secretary of the Ministry, H.M. Gunasekara, and the Deputy Postmaster General, W.A.J. Vikramasinghe, also attended this media conference. The Minister of Telecommunications and Information Technology, Ranjit Simbalapitiya, said that by end of October, the telegram service in the country will come to an end. The move has been possible due to the progress being achieved in the communication development sector and in the information technology sectors. 
The second Thai Sri Lanka Fisheries Corporation Conference started this morning under the chairmanship of Minister of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources Development, Dr. Rajita Sena Ratna, at the Golf Face Hotel in Colombo. The conference will be held for three days. Representatives of government and private institutions of Sri Lanka and Thailand will attend the conference. The Thai delegation is led by the Director General of the Fisheries Department of Thailand, Dr. Vimal Jantarota. The Deputy Minister of Fisheries, Sarat Kumar Gunavadana, and Secretary to the Ministry of Fisheries, Dr. D. M. R. B. Desanayake, Deputy Ambassador of Royal Thai Embassy in Sri Lanka, Narong Yudakarj Manton, and several others attended the inaugural function. Well, today marks what would have been the 55th birthday of the King of Pop, still one of the most celebrated artists in music, Jackson, who began his music career at a young age as part of the Jackson Five with his brothers. He died in 2009 at the age of 50. Michael Joseph Jackson was born in Gary on the 29th of August 1958. If he were still alive today, the King of Pop would be celebrating his 55th birthday. Jackson's decades-long stint in the music business earned him multiple Grammy Awards, chart-topping hits and a lasting legacy. Though his sudden death from cardiac arrest caused him little combination of prescription drugs, shocked friends, family and fans, his iconic legacy has continued to live on in the entertainment and the industry. King of Pop's brother Jermaine Jackson recently toured Sri Lanka. In an exclusive interview with Rupa Bahini, he paid tribute to his late beloved brother. It's, it's something we will never get over. We're, we're still mourning. Well, I guess we're mourning for the rest of our lives. It's, it's, he was such an incredible human being. I feel that he was a gift because he spent, God blessed him with a tremendous talent and he used that blessing to give back to people. His message and his music and, um, and just wanting to show people around the world how we should be towards each other and that's something that came from his upbringing of our parents instilled morals and principles in us and and um, we come from very small humble beginnings and but um, the outreach we be we were blessed to be loved around the world so Michael was just extraordinary and um, there'll never be another Michael never we miss him so much and he took those blessings from God. And UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon says he will receive a report on Saturday from weapons inspectors investigating an apparent Syrian chemical attack. Hundreds are reported to have died in the attack near Damascus last week. U.S. President Barack Obama has said that he has not yet decided on a plan for retaliatory action against Syria. Other nations are also considering the next move. The U.K. wants a U.N. Security Council resolution to take all necessary measures to help civilians. News agencies have reported that some heavy weaponry has been moved out of bases and staff has partially vacated some headquarters. It is logical for the Syrian army to have some sort of plan to protect itself from any attack, especially since the progress towards launching a military strike has been discussed so openly by Western powers. And that's where we end tonight's edition on Rupalwani News. Together with Daphne and Chanakya, I'm Rohan Mendes saying thanks for watching. Good night. Good night.